Mordecai, you know, that your words were stout against me. And then you were saying that it is unprofitable to keep your laws because we're not prospering the world in, in doing so. And that's because he didn't believe in keeping the laws of the Most High was, was, was going to keep them, okay? That the Most High was going to protect them and supply for them. That's the reason why some of the covetous Israelites, the two-third Israelites back in those days, were saying that the law is unprofitable, right? But Paul says right here, for there is verily in this an annulling, okay, of the commandment before, okay, going before the weakness and the unprofitableness thereof. All right, so let's get into the definition of this annulling, all right? To get a clear understanding of that. Bear with me one minute here, brothers and sisters. Let's bring up this definition of disannulling or disannul. All right. And once again, this is your brother, Yahweh Ayasara, from the milk delivers of Israel and the seed souls of Israel, also the rocks of the fence and ambassadors for righteousness once again. Sowing that seed and delivering that milk to all of our people out there, preferably towards the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of Negroid descent. I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit here. So we're going to get into the definition of disannulling or disannul. Okay. Okay, so as you can see here, just to show you, so you don't think I'm driving you right. For those who don't understand what the definition of this and all is, right? So we can have a clear understanding of that scripture there, right? It says right here, disannulled or disannulling. To annul utterly, utterly, make void, to disannul a contract, okay? Meaning, you know, you don't keep your contract. You know, you make your, your contract void. You don't fulfill the obligations of the contract that was dealt you, right? So that's what that means to disannul. The contract that was made with us, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, was the keeping of the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High. That was the most highest contract to us, all right? But we walked contrary to his contract, all right? And then it says here, what does disannul mean, all right? So let's get into that, okay? A transitive verb, right? Annul, cancel. Synonyms, example, all right? So that's basically what that is, to annul, to cancel, all right? And then you have like a similitude here, all right, which is obeys. Let's get into that. What is the meaning of obeys, okay? To lower in rank, office, or prestige, or esteem, obeys oneself. The shame that has had obeys him within or without okay to lower in rank all right so that's what the sinful people of our nation done you know they cast the laws of the most high behind them they say that we don't have to keep the laws anymore we're in for everlasting grace we can live however we want we can do whatever we want all right so this is what our people the sinful people of our nation done man all right which is the definition of obeys all right which is synonymous with annul Okay, and if you get into the definition, the Webster's uh, version of the definition of this and all, which we're going to do. Okay.
once again it's a transitive verb which it says cancel all right so this is what we did once again we canceled out of our minds the law statutes the commandment to the most high especially the people that's telling you that we're not supposed to be keeping the passover oh christ is our passover lamb we're not supposed to be oh you're killing christ over and over when you eat that lamb for passover and that have nothing to do with the um with christ even though he is the ultimate lamb right he's the lamb of the most high but he's not the passover lamb okay the passover lamb is the ordinance of the most high that we are supposed to have that's the, the the meal that the children of israel ate before they was um saved out of the land of egypt by the most high okay let's see if i can go down a little bit here i don't think it's going to give too much uh let me see cinnamons okay all right you got this here to abate abolish okay abrogate annul avoid okay this is what our people do man they avoid the law statute the commandment to the most high right cancel dissolve and validate okay they don't even validate it you know negate null nullify quash repeal all right strike down vacate okay so these are your your synonyms of this and all all right so that should give you a better understanding of what's being spoken about there in the book of uh hebrews okay what it says here right for there is a verily a disannulling of the commandment going before this and the unprofitableness thereof. Okay, so that's what we did, man. That's the clear understanding of that scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 18, man. So the sinful people of our nation, they're the ones that disannulled the most highest law, statutes, the commandments before the weaknesses, which is the judgments, okay, the unprofitableness, right? thereof because they felt that the most high wasn't going to keep us for keeping his law statute of commandments man okay also which is referred to in the book of malachi chapter 3 verse 14 okay so that's what that's talking about man all right so we're going to go to the book of romans chapter 3 starting at verse 30 so this is how you get the clear understanding of these things man to fully understand these scriptures, you have to understand the definition of words, man. You just can't jump over one word and go straight to the next and then try to twist scripture, you know, through the wickedness of your own mind, man, to, to, to uh, try to deceive the people, man. You know, that's going off. You can't do that because you're, you're, you're leading the blind astray. Okay. But we're going to go to the book of Romans chapter three. Romans chapter 3, starting at verse 30, and it reads, Seeing it is one God, which is the most high, one power, one Elohim, one Adonai, right? Which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith, okay? Now the circumcision are the ones who knows about the laws, and are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Also, this in in this sense, this can be referred to as the nation of Israel, the ones who's uh, born of Israel. Okay, and then you have the uncircumcision, meaning the ones who are not necessarily keeping the laws of the Most High, but they have faith in the one and only true Christ, which is Hamashiach Yahushai, according to the biblical scripture. Okay. This is not referring to like some other nation of people that's not of Israel, man. When it says the uncircumcision in this sense, it's talking about the people who are not aware of all statutes, the commandments and the ordinances of the most high, but they have faith in the one and only true Hamashiach. 
All right. Verse 30 again from the top. Seeing it is one God, one power, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law, which is the law, statute, the commandment to the Most High in the order of ordinances through faith in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai only? The Most High forbid, yea, we establish the law. Okay, so when you establish something, that means you only reiterating what's already there, what's already proven to be fact. All right, that's what you do when you establish something. Okay. That doesn't mean that you're establishing something new or going off your own doctrine. You know, you're establishing something that's already there. Salakia. Okay. And what was already there? The giving of the commandments through Moses of the Most High himself. Okay. In all of the ordinances. So Paul basically is saying that we establish the law, the ones who's keeping the law, so that's the commandment to the Most High, the ones who's believing in the one and only true Hamashiach. We are establishing these things. Okay. Let's go to the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5. Okay, we're in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5. Okay. Which is written in red letter, as you can see here. So, you know, that's Hamashiach, right? Starting at verse 17, and it reads, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. The prophets are the ones that's teaching you to keep the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High. Not these so-called preachers in religious Christianity and churchanity and Roman Catholicism. All of these false prophets in Islam, all of these false prophets in Kemet, okay, and Hinduism, Buddhism, okay, all of your so-called, um, what do you call those guys, philosophers, okay, in Hinduism, in Buddhism, okay, in Jainism, all right, doing witchcraft, all right, Wiccan witchcraft, okay. The true prophets of the Most High are the ones that's teaching you that we're not in for everlasting grace and to keep the law, statutes, the commandments and the ordinances of the Most High, right? Verse 17, again from the top, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but for fulfill, okay? To fulfill the law, which is to fulfill the Most High's word and prophecy, all right? Verse 18, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, okay? It looks like heaven and earth is still here to me, right? You can see it. Heaven and earth is still there. I still see the sky is blue. Okay, I still see the earth. All right. Verse 18 again from the top. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Okay, which is the law, statute, the commandment to the Most High. By the way, till all be fulfilled. Okay, till all the prophecies be fulfilled. Verse nineteen: Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. Okay, teaching people not to keep the law, statute, the commandment to the Most High. Teaching people not to keep the dietary law, not to keep the seventh day Sabbath holy, not to keep the ordinances as far as the Passover. Okay. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them. OK, the ones that's teaching the people to keep the law, statutes, the commandments of the most high. All right. And the ordinances and the seventh day Sabbath. All right. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. OK, so this is in red letter itself from Hamashiach Yahushai himself. All right. Let's go to the book of St. Luke, and we're going to end that there. Just to nail this one home, right? Basically, the icing on top of the cake with the cherry on top, right?
Okay, we're in the book of St. Luke, chapter 22, starting at verse 13. All right. And as you can see here, the title of this, I mean, it's plain as day, right? The apostles prepare for the Passover. Okay. Starting at verse 13 through 19, and it reads, And they went and found as he had said. Okay, let me try to angle this a little bit better. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Okay, who's he? That's Hamashiach, who's they? That's the 12 disciples, okay? And when the hour was come, he sat down with the 12 with him. Okay, that's Hamashiach and the 12 apostles again. When the hour was come, all right, which is the even, all right? Verse 15, and he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. All right. So Hamashiach is letting them know that, you know, it's the, the, the prophecy must be fulfilled. You know, he was sent here by the most high to uh, keep the ordinances and to reinstill the ordinances back into you to let you know how it's supposed to be done, how we supposed to be doing it as a nation of people here on earth. All right. But it was already prophesied that he was going to die. There's a lot of people that was against the most high in this world. All right. And they still are to this day. All right. Verse 16. For verily I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of the most high. All right. Verse 17. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, now for all of those people <laughs> who like to say Hamashiach or Christ, or Jesus, as they like to say, he is God himself. So as it says here, who is Hamashiach giving thanks to? Is he giving thanks to himself? I mean, that, that don't make no sense, right? So how can Jesus, as you like to say, be God himself, but he's giving thanks? Who he's giving thanks to? Right? You put one and one together on that, right? Verse 17 again from the top. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said to this or take this Salakia and divide it amongst yourselves. Verse 18, for verily I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of the most high shall come. Meaning when Hamashiach is sent back the second time from the most high, right? Verse 19, and he took the bread and gave thanks. Okay. Which is the unleavened bread, by the way, for the Passover and unleavened bread feast, right? Because the first date of unleavened bread and the Passover is the same day. Okay. And he took bread and gave thanks. Okay. Once again, to the most high, not himself and baked it and gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Okay. So there it is, man. There you have it. As it says here. The apostles prepare for the Passover. And as it says here, once again, written in the red letter from Hamashiach himself. And he said unto them, which is the disciples with desire. Okay. Which is want. I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Okay. So you can't say that Hamashiach is our Passover and he's the lamb that's being crucified and, and, and uh, sacrificed over and over again for the Passover when we eat the Passover lamb as an ordinance that we're supposed to keep as a nation of people according to the book of Exodus chapter 12. Because Christ himself, when he was here in the flesh with us, he kept the Passover himself. All right. So I'm going to end that there. You know, once again, this is your brother, Yahweh, the Ayasara from the sea souls of Israel and the milk deliverers of Israel and also the rocks of offense and ambassadors for righteousness. Once again, 
so on that seed and delivering that milk to all of our people out there, preferably towards the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians of a Negroid descent. All right. So hopefully that this video was edifying, hopefully that it was edifying and enjoyable. Once again, as I always like to say, love is love. Till the next time. Shalom.